Next thing we were going to talk about is some of the common myths of the EU market, which we might have touched on some of these already. So anything that we haven't touched on that people tend to believe about Europe that aren't true? Well, a lot of people tend to believe that um, just using ChatGPT to translate your listings is enough, um, but it's really not. If there's something I could recommend is that you lo um, localize your listings to the language of the country, even the UK. I know, obviously, we speak the same language, but there's so many words that are different and you don't want to be making those mistakes. Um, we've seen all kinds. So definitely localize your listings would be one of the tips and slash myths that not everyone speaks in the same way. Okay. So you haven't seen that chat GPT is good enough yet to translate into different languages properly. It's a great start, um, but I wouldn't fully, fully rely on it. Um, there's so many good companies out there that can use what you have already translated and just make sure that it's localized to the actual country. Um, so yeah, I would say it's it's almost there, just not, not yet. It's a lot better than Google Translate for sure, especially if you tell it to translate into a specific region like if you tell it to translate into uk english or british english it will do better but still not perfect but it's those kind of things that when the client google is, searches it on amazon you want to make sure that yours pops up yeah and, and you want to have the language right because here in the us for example we're used to looking at listings that are obviously put out up by somebody in china that doesn't speak English very well. And it's, it's very obvious uh, as soon as you start reading it. So you don't want your product to be on that kind of level. Exactly. Yeah. And then we also mentioned about the VAT. So you know that you need to add it onto your listing price and it's not being added at checkout. I think that would be the, the next myth that a lot of people think. Um, and I guess another myth that people, well, you mentioned it, that you're going to need to have numbers everywhere that you sell and you need to file everywhere. And I'm just going to have to do the, everything I do with the IRS in the US. I'm going to have to do it per country in every single country I sell to. That's not the case. It's, it's honestly as simple as just decide where you want to store. We'll help you get your VAT number. We'll do the filings for you as well. So you don't have to do anything. And then you can start selling. Um, and I think my fourth uh, myth that I come across quite often is that people think that they need to register a new company, register a new company in Europe, have a new bank account, have a new CPA. You don't have to do all that with everything that you've established already and it's working well. Use that company and then just get your VAT numbers in Europe and expand. You don't need to have a new company. Yeah, I definitely don't want to have a bunch of companies laying around and then have to file a million tax returns and everything else. All right. Very good. Uh, any other common myths or anything that we haven't touched on yet? Uh, nothing I can think of right now. I don't know whether past conversations you've had with uh, sellers, uh, common questions come up that I could maybe... Um, explain a bit in more detail? Well, I think the big ones we've covered most of them being tax related and then, you know, how much is my product actually gonna sell over there? Um, one thing that I just thought of, so in the USA, if your product is made in the USA, that can be a benefit to people who are looking for that. Uh, the same can go for, you know, Germany has a, has a reputation of high quality. Uh, Europe in general for like foods and things like that have a reputation of being more healthy. Is there any benefit of USA made products in European countries that are similar? It definitely depends on the type of product that you're selling. If clients are looking for specific wines, they might be looking, as you mentioned, for specific made products in Italy or Spain or France. If they're looking for cheese, they might go for French cheese. So I think for let's toys um, and household items are I would say the most popular items that sell in Europe. And if the client does see that they're made in the US, they might be more likely to buy it than if it's sold in if it's made in China or India. So it's just that sense of knowing where the product has come from. 
Um, so I would say, yes, it does come as a benefit, but I wouldn't say it's a huge difference between one or the other, depending on the product that you sell. Um, obviously, if we're talking about very niche products. They might be more leaning towards specific countries. Um, but I would say supplements is maybe the, the top one selling right now that I would see clients rather buying it from U.S. made um, factories than anywhere else.